The gentlewoman yields back. I recognize Ms. Clark for five minutes of question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member Ivey, and uh, good afternoon. Before I begin, I want to correct some statements made by Chairman, uh, the Chairman about Jen Easterling and CISA. First, Jen Easterling never recommended regulating cognitive infrastructure. I ask unanimous consent to submit into the record an article from The Hill containing her full quote. On a related manner, aside from cyber incident reporting, CISA is not a regulator. It has no authority to regulate critical infrastructure outside of cyber incident reporting. Second, when asked at an appropriations hearing, Jen Easterling responded to questions about switchboarding in the present tense. And it is true that CISA no longer engages in switchboarding. Switchboarding occurred during the previous administration. And finally, the CISA Advisory Committee's MDM subcommittee does not exist any longer and hasn't existed for over a year. Every recommendation the subcommittee made while it has existed is on the website. So having said that, there's been a lot of discussion and fear mongering about the work of DHS and CISA in particular, and I appreciate this opportunity to set the record straight. Uh, Mr. Sullenberger, in your testimony, you advocate for abolishing CISA, an agency created by legislation led by former committee chairman Mike McCall, a Republican, and signed into law by former President Donald Trump. At the time, President Trump stated that CISA would, and I quote, lead federal government's civilian response to cyber threats against our nation, and we've had many, many threats, the men and women of the new cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency will be on the front lines of our cyber defense. They will partner with the private sector and all levels of government to defend America's power grids, banks, telecommunications, and other critical parts of our economy. As the cyber battleship evolves, this new agency will ensure that we confront the full range of threats from nation states, cyber criminals, and other malicious actors, of which there are many. This is an enormous mission. Over the past five years, CISA has rapidly built capacity to help state and local governments and critical infrastructure defend against and built resilience to a range of cyber threats. CISA spends $45 million of its nearly $3 billion budget on election security. So uh, Mr. Schellenberger, do you know what percent of CISA's budget, overall budget that is? Uh, well, let me tell you that, that that's about 1.5% <laughs> of its overall budget. It's about 1.5%. Of the 45 million CISA spends on election security, about 2 million of those funds are used to support efforts to counter influence operations. Mr. Sellenberger, do you know what percentage of CISA's budget that is? Uh, too much. Uh, I mean, it's not even one-tenth of a percent of CISA's overall budget. And yet here Mr. we are Chair, debating. Although, excuse me. I'm reclaiming my time. Mr. Chairman, at the outset, it is clear that CISA has not engaged in any nefarious or unconstitutional activity. There is simply no evidence of it, but suggesting to abolish an agency because you disagree with less than 2% of what it does is just not a serious recommendation. So let me thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I yield back the balance of my time. The 